Okay, welcome to the second video tutorial of Bleed 2D, which will cover the advanced features of the editor. Okay, let's start with the level created in the first video tutorial, which was this here. And um, now um, let's talk about uh, multiple selections. You can not only select uh, one item at a time, but also multiple items at the same time. So uh, this can be achieved in two ways. One is just uh, start uh, selecting anywhere uh, with the left mouse button, holding it, and then um, you um, open a box like this, a selection box. And whenever uh, the center of a texture lies inside this box, it gets added to the selection. So if you move it like this, and you select multiple items at once. Okay. Now, um, as you can see, only uh, one item has a yellow frame around it, yellow selection frame. The other items have uh, an orange one. Uh, this is because um, there is a first selected item and then there is all the other items. So the first selected item has a special meaning and that's why it has uh, its own color. So the yellow one is the first selected item. Now, What's the special meaning of the first selected item? It's the item that gets selected here in the tree view and also the item whose properties are shown here in the property grid. Okay. Um, now, if you want to move uh, all these items, you can just um, grab any item of the selection and um, move the whole selection around. Okay. If you want to rotate, Again, you just middle click anywhere and then you can rotate all of them around uh, each one center. And now you can see the special meaning of the first selected item because it's the item that controls um, the rotation, for example. The same thing for scale. So if you want to scale them, all of them, then you just scale by moving farther away or nearer to the center of the first selected item. Okay. Now, if the selection frames annoy you, you can just hold down spacebar and then they disappear. So, but you can still uh, make your scaling or even rotate. Okay. So once you release spacebar, they are shown again. If you don't like the colors of these selection frames, you can change them also in your settings dialog. So you have color selection first and color selection rest okay okay if you don't agree with the first selected item that was um, chosen by the editor it's uh, actually the first item in the order here uh, you can manually make a multiple selection by just uh, selecting an item and then you can add items to the selection by holding down shift left shift key and selecting other items like this. Okay, so this is the manual way of selecting multiple items. Okay, now once multiple items are selected, you have several tools that are active now, which can be found here. So, it's, uh, for example, you have a line horizontally, which means that um, all the all, all the items uh, but the first one are uh, moved so that they are on one horizontal line. So now that our first selected item is this one and its center is here on this spot here. So if you uh, align horizontally, this is what you get. So all the other items' uh, origins or centers are in one line, in one horizontal line. Uh, it's basically the same as in uh, Microsoft Visual Studio in the uh, form designer. Okay, let's make uh, undo. Uh, you have the same thing aligned vertically, and then you have align rotation and align scale. I call them, I don't know if that's a good name. It basically means that uh, if you have items which have uh, different rotations, like this. Uh, I think um, 
these are not good textures for demonstrating this but anyway so you have um, different rotations you can just uh, make all the rotations the same like this okay so they now they face the same direction okay that's basically it and the same thing for scale so they get scaled the same amount in case they are scaled differently okay you can also move selected items to another layer or copy them to another layer so for example uh, yeah let's move them to layer 2 since now they are on layer 1 obviously so let's move them to layer 2 so now several textures from here should move up there let's see yeah so if you select all which by the way can be done uh, with uh, control A then you can see that um, the textures have moved obviously okay and layer 1 only has these two okay so these were the tools now um, let's move on to something very interesting um, up until now you have seen how to um, manipulate textures how to place textures in your level which are uh, mostly there for a uh, visual purpose and also maybe for for your level structure but you might want to add um, areas in your level or uh, other items that only have some some meaning for your game logic for example you might want to add an area which uh, upon entered uh, by the player triggers some events or something like that for this I have added the possibility to use primitive items I call them so they're here under the tab primitives um, so at the moment three primitive tabs are supported it's rectangle circle and path um, the primitive items um, are there to define areas or uh, a path actually uh, that you can use in any way that you want so um, they probably won't have a visual representation in your game although they can if you want them to have one okay let's see how you can add primitive items um, you add primitive items by double clicking on them so then um, it tells you that uh, you can start a new rectangle with the left click and exit the rectangle draw mode with the right click so now uh, the mouse cursor has changed to a cross and I can uh, start a rectangle by just clicking anywhere and uh, I don't have to hold down my mouse button so now I can just uh, move anywhere and uh, left click again to add the rectangle to the level now as you can see the rectangle is called rectangle 10 it has a green rectangle icon here and since it's only defined by position width and height um, it can't be rotated so it's only there to define uh, basically an axis aligned rectangle okay uh, what it has is a fill color so if you don't like the color here uh, in your editor you can uh, just uh, change it here so this is the default fill color for for all primitive items uh, which you can change in the settings menu here 